Right. So anyway, this, this class, I'm go we're going to cover, we're going to go back and just sort of touch on everything we talked about for the entire year. But what, besides just going back and repeating everything, which I'm not going to do since we can't do that in an hour and a half, I'm going to try to connect the dots for you so you've got, you kind of see what we were doing all year because it all really all connects up when you think about it. Remember we started off talking about animals and humans. Everybody remember back that far? And we talked about like what, what people like and the difference between people and other animals since human beings are animals as well. What's that? Speak up. I, I, do you have, is this important? I'm a gorilla. What's that? All right, let's look into a brother-sister thing. I want, I want to actually, I'm going to try to just whiz through this because we've got a lot, a lot of material. So, so let's wait for a while before you get, get, give me some questions, okay? So we talked about similarities and differences between animals and humans. We talked about cats, bunny rabbits, dogs, deer, and how they all related. And whether they actually had some sort of government. And remember one point, I think Noah was talking about how or maybe it was, maybe it was Forrest, I forgot, talked about how actually deer are organized. They do have some sort of government. They are organized. There is somebody who leads them. Hey, here's a greener pasture. Here's greener, um, here's more plants for us to go to. It's actually, there is some sort of government there. We started talking about why do we need government? Why do humans need government? Do animals need government? We talked about that. And we talked about what the needs are of human beings. And human beings need to eat. We need food, clothing, shelter. We need, sometimes people might say, emotional security. Uh, other people like organization, consistency, predictability. Those are other needs of human beings. But the basics is that we have a house to live in, a um, we have our food, we have a place to dispose of our wastes so they don't come back at us. These are all various needs of human beings. And so how does government relate to that? Well, when you have like a whole lot of people start living together or living close together and the goods are limited, the earth becomes limited in terms of the land that you're using, then you start figuring, then government comes into play. And I don't know if you thought we remember this, but white men, the white civilization, has a different form of government than Native Americans historically. White men's government was based on what they called natural law, John Locke. You remember that? John Locke talked about natural law and talked about white man's relationship to the earth, where we could just go and pick berries because it was our right to do so. God gave us the earth. While the Native Americans, not all of them, but a lot of them, would look at the earth in a more of a relationship, like you, let's say you would have with your mother or your father. The earth was my, is my mother. I have to treat it with respect. I'm not just going to take stuff off of it. And that's the difference in approach and also resulted in different types of government. So the Native Americans were looked at as custodians. Now... In the government, actual government of the Native Americans, remember Mark Madrid was with you guys and talked about that, and he talked about a little bit about how the mothers of the clan would pick the leaders. They would decide early on which person, either a boy or a girl, was going to be a good leader, and that's how the leaders were chosen. While in white man's world, it's totally crazy. Who's been following the Obama, Hillary, Clinton election. I mean, it sort of gets down to who's wearing an American flag in their lapel, whose preacher is more obnoxious. It has really nothing to do with what, how they're going to be, whether they're going to be good leaders or not. It's a very strange process. The Haudenosaunee, those were six nations that were right around the New York, Pennsylvania area when the colonists first came to the United States, the Haudenosaunee had spent thousands of years figuring out how to live peace, 
helpful with each other. And from those, from their way of living in government, some of the Bill of Rights developed. You know, some people don't realize, but our Bill of Rights would develop from the, from the Six Nations. Then we talked about the Tao. The Tao is a, maybe you could call it a religion, but it's an Eastern type of philosophy. And the Tao is, people talk about the Tao when Taoists would say, um, we need government when people become dishonest, when people are not nice to each other. That's when we need government. And Tao, Tao people who are Taoists would be into less government because they believe government with government comes all the evils of, of humanity. And then within government, what happens? Certain people have power over you. Remember we had a policeman here? Well, that policeman, actually, you even recognized that policeman. That policeman, huh? That was who? No, no. That, that policeman has the power sometimes, and we'll talk about that, to come into your house, to arrest you, to throw you to the ground. Remember he was talking about a woman who actually re resisted him, and he threw her to the ground? So the government, when you have this government, you give people in the government power of you, not only power to take away your home and your property, but power to throw you in jail, power to be physical, even violent with you. That And why do people do that? Why do you relinquish the power over yourself and give it to somebody else who you don't even know and trust? Because of what government supposedly gives you back, the security. You'll know that you can go out and not have to worry maybe about people who are violent because you can always call the police. You don't have to worry about something getting stolen from your house because the police will come. You have all that law and order there to protect you. So you give up a lot of your own personal freedom to do whatever you want, like to wander the woods. Let's say you were a deer. Instead of being a deer, going out and just, I'm going to go into Zach's yard and eat what, you know, go into his garden and eat stuff. Well, he wouldn't, let, he, he wouldn't let me do that. But if I was a deer, if we were all deer, I would do that. I wouldn't, you know, fences wouldn't make any difference to me. So we give power to people, and power corrupts. Absolute power tends to corrupt absolutely. It doesn't mean it will. But when you give somebody complete and utter full power, they become corrupted. They start doing bad and nasty things. Remember we read Animal Farm? Who remembers Animal Farm? Animal Farm, what happened to the pigs? Can anybody tell me? Kim? Hold on, let me, let me give you this microphone. And what happened to the pigs? They had too much power. Did they start off as good pigs trying to help out the other animals? Yeah. And then what happened? Napoleon took over. They, that? they took over? Napoleon took over. Napoleon took over. And did Napoleon, at the end of the book, was Napoleon a good pig or was he? Bad. Bad. Why? Right, right. All right. So what happened to Napoleon is, uh, is Napoleon started off as a good pig. Then he got into competition with, was it Snowball? Yeah. Snowball. And he decided he didn't want to share the power. So he knocked off Snowball. He had the boys rub him out. And so that happens everywhere. Now let's go to the U.S. colonists. The people who first came over here, all these people who came from Europe, from England, from France, came over here mostly, a lot of them seeking religious freedom because the governments, their governments were imposing religion on them and they wanted to worship in a different way. So a lot of them came over here for that. Some of them came over because they just heard it was a place of opportunity. King... It wasn't James, it was George, actually. Mistake. I should remember this, because now we have a King George, too. Thank you. <laughs> King.
King George. King George. I call him the first. King George was a nasty guy. He would uh, impose taxation on the colonists. He would um, accuse them of crimes without a trial and throw them in jail. He passed laws making them guilty of stuff that they had done before when there wasn't a law against it. Um, he did all these things and the colonists didn't like it. And finally there was a revolution, the American Revolution. We threw out the king and we put in place a constitution. The first thing we had, we, there was a bunch of col colonies and all the colonies were afraid of giving too much power to the central government. So they were very concerned about states' rights. That was really important. The states having the right to decide things and not have the central government tell them what to do. It was also important to have a balance of power and limit the executive power. So whoever was the president wouldn't become like another King George. In fact, we do have a King George today. There was also, they put in this this thing in the U.S. Constitution called habeas corpus. Who knows what that is? Habeas corpus. Show them the body. Show them the body. In other words, Christina, if they arrested you, they'd have to, uh, within 48 hours, they'd have to br bring you to, um, <coughs> excuse me, a courtroom. And your parents could come say, where's Christina? Here she is. That's habeas corpus. They have to show the body. Then there's bills of attainder. They didn't want those. They threw those out too. That's just arresting somebody without telling them what they did. A bill of attainder. You can't just put together a bill of attainder and say, Karuna, you're guilty of sucking on your fingers two weeks. Two weeks in the state penitentiary. All right. You just added another week to your... Punishment. And there's ex post facto laws. What's that, Noah? Ex post facto? Yeah. Or aren't those like laws that are now retro? Retro, that's right. Retroactive, right. Suddenly I tell all of you that you've been sitting in this school all year. Well, it's a crime. I just made it a crime. And now you're all guilty. That, those, would take, those were put in the Constitution and said you, the government can't do that. Yes, we're going to talk about that. And, and that's one of the things is, did the Constitution, how, how, how uh, good is the Constitution, you know, 200, 300 years later? The Bill of Rights was put in place because a lot of the states were worried that the Constitution wasn't enough. And they put 10 amendments in. The First Amendment has actually six rights in it, six rights in the First Amendment. Free speech, the right to assemble, get together in a public place, the right to have your own press, the right to practice your own religion, the right to be free from state-sponsored religion, and the right to petition the government. Six rights within the First Amendment. Okay, back to Animal Farm here. And this is um, always something to... Be aware of when any group you're in, whether it's a school group or a group of friends or any sort of government, people generally start off, the most idealistic people start off idealistic, and then later, sometimes they become not so idealistic. Happened here on the farm. Started off a very idealistic community, and then some people are still idealistic, but others dropped it. We talked about free speech, and can you go and walk outside, Elizabeth, and scream, uh, the school's on fire, school's on fire, if it, if it isn't, could you do that? Am I capable of it? No, I mean, would that be legal? Would you be allowed to do that under the First Amendment? Don't think so. Huh? Don't think so. That's right. Why not? Why wouldn't you allow to be do, to do it? Um, 
you can look at you can cheat and look at at um, here take this mic um, and look at the first thing I wrote here clear and present danger clear and present danger you can't say something that's going to create a clear and present danger so if you started shouting fire everybody would stomp out of here you all would knock me over Karuna would like run over me take her take her heels and kick me in the head as she was panicking to get out the door she'd probably break my nose because she was panicking to get out because Elizabeth said fire and so poor Alan would get hurt well, all his students would be running over him, knocking him out of the way. And the downside of the story is. What's that? The downside of the story is. The downside. <laughs> okay. So you can't say anything that's going to create a clear and present danger. You don't have the right under the First Amendment. Also, fighting words. I can't say to Noah. Don't but. I'm going to. I'm going to break your nose. Because he can say in both of your noses. Exactly. None of that language is protected under the First Amendment. Unless, of course, we were all kidding. I was. All so, right. So is Arrest him. What about I mean, I said, I mean, fighting words. So fighting words. Isn't declaring war illegal then? There you go. That's a good. Well, it's under the First Amendment. You couldn't be. It wouldn't be protected speech under the First Amendment. Libel and slander. You can't just say anything nasty about somebody else, unless it's true. You can't go around and say nasty things about people that you know or don't know if they're not true. If they're true, then under the First Amendment, you can. Then there's obscenity. Everybody knows what that is, right? If you know what it is, I'd be surprised because nobody really knows what it is. Obscenity is to some people, like John Lennon wrote the song Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. Every, he thought it was a kid song. And some people thought it was the most obscene song ever and they wanted it banned off the radio because they thought it had, it, he was actually talking about LSD. And people thought that was obscene. He would write a song about a drug that was like a kid song and so some people thought that was obscene and they tried to get it yanked off the radio then the Dixie Chicks said they didn't like the idea that they were from the same state as George Bush a lot of people started burning their records they thought they were obscene so obscenity is a very subjective um, criteria nobody really knows what that is now let's go back to what government is supposed to do. Government's supposed to protect us, make sure we're fed food, clothing, and shelter, make sure we don't come to any harm. How does having limits on free speech protect us? Do you know, Elizabeth? How do you know? How, how, how does it protect us? Do you have any idea? Well, you, you knew about the present danger. That does protect us. We're protected. But what about libel and slander? What about if you wanted to go around the school and badmouth me? Like Alan Graff, he's... And, and I... And, and you, all the stuff you said was untrue. And then I could sue you. I could say, and you'd say, well, I'm protected by the First Amendment. I can say whatever you want. And I said, no. You're not because you were lib you, you you committed libel and slander. You said bad stuff about me that was not true. Why should the government step in between us to protect me from your bad mouth? They shouldn't. Wait, 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 wait. Emotional harm to me. So you think the government should be protecting my emotional state against you? Think that's good? You think you want government doing that? My reputation, oh my God. Well, that would be true, you know. So that's so we want government doing that? Is that what, that what we're giving government power, giving them guns and weapons to protect my emotional state? And that's what we want government to do? That's America. 
That's America, home of the free. Okay. Freedom of religion and freedom from religion. Can you have a Christmas tree in a public park? The center, the, the town, the middle of the town. You've been in towns where you've had a yes. big Christmas tree? Yes. That okay? Not really. Not really? No. Why not? Why don't, why don't you think it's okay to have a big Christmas tree in the public square? Why not? Because uh, it's a symbol of the Christian faith. And? And you're not supposed to, you're, people are supposed to have freedom from other people's religions. All right, and in the public park, which is a government-owned, yeah, that there has to be the government. Separation of church and state right, park. so anybody can have a Christmas tree on their private property, but if you had a Christmas tree in a public place, especially like a public park or in the courthouses, there was one judge who, who, who insisted on putting up a copy of the Ten Commandments in his courthouse. And he finally had to take it down. He was really mad that he had to, but he, but he had to take it down. So, how about the ability to worship any way you want to? What about people who use peyote, which is a cactus, to worship? Native Americans. Can they do that? You should be... Yeah, only certain, you have to be part of the Native American church to do this. But what about if you weren't part of this church? Zach, you just want, you decided you want to use peyote as your religion. You're not a Native American, you're just some white boy. You want, you want to use some drugs to see God. That sounds totally like me. Sounds totally, okay, you're on YouTube now, remember that. that did, 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 I, uh, I'd like to know from people on YouTube that was sarcasm. <laughs> <laughs> that I was just joking, I'm protected by something. That's right, he's joking. protected. And so, alright, so, okay. It, so, who decides why do Native Americans get to use peyote for their religion, but not poor old Zach? who sarcastically would like to worship God through the use of, uh, of uh, cactus. Strange. Who decides that sort of stuff? We don't know. You know, that's it. Then there's freedom of the press. For us or for Rupert Murdoch? Rupert Murdoch is just bought... Are you making a point? A statement? Rupert Murdoch is just bought the Wall Street Journal. What else does he own? Fox News. Um, he's oh, he's buying. Uh, he owns the New Yorker. The New the, the New, the New Yorker, Yorker, the New York Times. Yeah. So, what do you think about one guy owning all of all the big press in the world? Do you think that's freedom of the press? Well, if, I, if I owned it, I would be. If you owned it, it would be okay. Cracks in the Constitution. Cracks in the Constitution. Some people said the Constitution is supposed, supposed to protect us from tyranny, from another King George. Has it done that? No. no. Who said no? Did you say no? You said no. No? You said no? Tell me why. Why isn't the Constitution protecting us? Speak up. Right, like snooping on people, and like saying, and declaring, war. declaring war illegally. How about locking up people without them even going to trial? That is the bill of attainder. They get to go to Cuba. Hab habeas corpus. By the way, if you ever get a chance, there's a new movie out called Harold and Kumar: Escape from Guantanamo Bay. Yeah. 
It's hilarious. Was it actually decent, Alan? It was decent. I was thinking about Very funny, very funny. So, there's the tyranny of the majority. Okay, look at what's happening in the presidential elections right now. Obama is like being criticized because he's not Christian enough. Who cares? Obviously, a lot of people care, and that's become very important. You know? Yeah. And so, does the Constitution protect against the tyranny of the majority? Does it protect against unlimited executive power, corrupted power, the president that spies on us? Okay. Um, remember we had Ray Abelea here? Remember Ray? Code Pink? Everybody remember her? Yeah. And she was an activist. We did this whole thing with a big, uh, was it a train of sort? Yeah. Well, does everybody know what an activist is? Activist is someone who is active, who tries to make changes. Why be an activist? To do good? Just to do good? Cause trouble? Attracts girls. Oh, I didn't write that one. Makes things interesting. Attracts girls. Do question authority, man. All right. How about for all you girls? Do you want to be an activist to attract boys? Or, I don't know, if you even attract okay. other girls. <laughs> Okay, attract whoever you'd like to attract. How about that? Well, who would, who, who's interested in being an activist? I am an activist. You are an activist. Who's, who else? You? Yeah? Being active, being engaged, yes? To some degree. A little bit? I know, being active sounds hard and I'm lazy. All right, sounds hard and you're lazy. Okay, we're going to take a 10-minute break and come back and keep going on the Fourth Amendment. So I'm just covering all this stuff, okay? And everybody's taking notes. If you don't, this, I'll put this thing up on YouTube in the next couple of days so you can look at it. But the test, again, is going to be in all the stuff I'm covering today. We'll see you at 25 to 5. Everybody can take a break.